Hey guys, John here from John and Miriam's Travel Vlog, coming to you from the Spare Bedroom Studio. You know a philosopher once said that one of the definitions of hell is that upon your death, you meet the person you could have been and see the life that you could have led. And I don't know about you, but that thought sends chills up and down my spine. So one of my personal fears is that people, when they watch our YouTube channel, will go, Oh look, a couple of rich people playing with their toys and bragging about it. And that little voice inside of my head says if they only knew, if they only knew the story. Then that little guy that's up to your shoulder sometimes, he whispered in my ear and says, well they won't know if you don't tell them. And so I'm going, what do you mean? He goes, one of the goals of our channel is to be inspirational, so tell them the story. It's like, okay, maybe it's time and maybe that might help other people overcome some obstacles to get where they want to be in life also. So that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, it's a great, beautiful spring day. The spider is gassed up and uh, I'm going to go for a ride and tell you my backstory. Come along. Hey guys, welcome back. You know, after watching a couple of our uh, videos on YouTube, uh, I'm asking myself, are we really achieving the goals we set out when we uh, established our our, uh, our channel, which is to uh, entertain, to inform, and to inspire? And I don't know if we've done that much inspiring. Uh, I, I don't want to come across as uh, you know, some sort of affluent couple who has all those, these uh, discretionary income and spends money on these toys, uh, uh, which is really not the case. You know, I, we all know that life is uh, full of some interesting challenges, whether they be uh, health-related, uh, relationship-related, or, or financial, or a combination of uh, any of the three. But I, I do want to, you know, inspire people a little bit. So I came to the decision that I was going to share a little bit about my own life, and uh, maybe it'll be a little bit of an inspiration uh, to some people. Now, I grew up in a uh, classic uh, middle-class family. My parents were... Uh, uh, my dad was a welder, my mom was a nurse, uh, you know, they grew up in the Great Depression and one of the lessons that I, uh, I was taught and by watching, not as much by telling, but watching, was to be uh, self-reliant, to depend on yourself as much as humanly possible. And uh, so that's one of the things I've always carried with me. And now when I was younger, for whatever reason, I've always wanted to be a pilot, to fly airplanes. Uh, I started flying when I was uh, 17 years old to the horror of my poor mother. Uh, I paid for it by washing dishes at a local restaurant after school, and uh, I was soloing. That's when you fly by yourself for the first time when I was 17 years old. Now, after high school, uh, I uh, did a four-year tour in the Air Force. After that, I uh, started a career with my uh, local city government. My tour in the Air Force earned me the uh, GI Bill, which I used for my ad uh, advanced flight training. I also earned my real estate license and started doing some real estate investing. Did pretty good. Was able to buy my first airplane uh, with the money from the real estate investing. So after serving 23 years in local government, I decided to uh, step away and start my own aviation business, uh, which did really well for the first couple of years. So we got to the point where I had about a dozen uh, employees, uh, flight instructors and admin folks and maintenance staff. I had six airplanes. Uh, we were the uh, busiest uh, flight school in the area. And then 9-11 happened, followed by a couple of other uh, business setbacks. And by September of 2004, I had to close the business that I had invested my life savings in. And a few months after that, my marriage ended. My own airplane was auctioned off by the bank because I couldn't make the payments. A few months after that, I had to sell my home of 23 years. I was 47 years old. I was broke and living in a hotel because my credit was so bad, nobody would rent me an apartment. But wait, it gets better. Decided to go back into real estate. I had earned my license back in the mid-80s, and I decided I'd go back into uh, to that to try to make a career. Then my car broke down. I uh, couldn't afford to get it fixed, and my dad loaned me and my dad loaned me his 25-year-old pickup truck uh, so I can get around. Uh, that winter, 
I came down with an excruciating case of shingles, followed by a case of pneumonia. And then you guessed it, the real estate market collapsed. Um, at that time, ramen noodles were selling for $0.10 cents a piece. For $2, I could eat for a week. And I knew exactly how long it would take for a check that I would write my local grocery store to clear. So I can write uh, a check uh, for some groceries a couple days before I actually got a, uh, a paycheck. And so I'd be able to eat. Uh, I would work evenings uh, at the at a, doing janitorial work, cleaning offices and, and apartments. And in the mornings, I would get up, put on a coat and tie and a smiley face and, and go to work and play real estate agent. In 2006, the country singer Rodney Atkins came out with a song uh, entitled, uh, When You're Going Through Hell. Um, I'm going to put a link for that song down below. Uh, to this day, I think he wrote that song. It was based on my life. And I cannot listen to that song, uh, you know, all these years later without becoming very, very emotional about it. Now, I had always been a big fan of motivational and success speakers, uh, and I was joking with myself and saying, you know, one day this is going to make a great comeback story, but, but first, y you've got to come back. Being an, being an obsessive compulsive planner, I developed a very detailed plan, and every morning I'd look at my strategy, my plan of action, make changes if I need to, and would just constantly work my plan, and it slowly worked. So somewhere along the line, I decided to name my plan John 2.0. After a few months, I was able to uh, get into a small rental condo and move out of my hotel. And then in 2007, things started to change for the better. Real estate was picking up. Uh, I was able to pay some bills. Uh, I met Miriam. Uh, and my life came back together slowly but surely. So in summary, I've sort of been down in that deep, dark place. Uh, you know, I'm sure... Uh, it could have gotten a lot darker and a lot deeper, but uh, thank you very much. I don't want to ever try that again. Um, you know, to this day, I guess I suffer from a little PTSD. I, I keep, uh, I, I have a cabinet in the garage that I store what I call my camping food. It's, uh, it's full of shelf-stable food, to include ramen noodles. And my, my beautiful wife, Miriam, refers to that as my food anxiety, and I, I think she understands. You know, fortunately, mine was just a, a financial upheaval. Uh, still had my health, uh, still had a, re a reasonably sound mind. Uh, I didn't have any children that were responsible. I was responsible for, so that was a, a bit of a blessing. Uh, but I, I just want to use this as, as, but I want to use this story as as a lesson that, you know, you can come back. I, I built my life from scratch from the very beginning. Uh, it crashed, and I built it again, and I, I hope it never happens, but if uh, my life is turned upside down again, I hope I can still rebuild it, as long as I've got the, uh, the fire in my belly to do so. So that's what I wanted to say today, and when you see our videos, uh, it's, it's not that I'm bragging, it's just that I am really, really happy that uh, my life has uh, come back to where it's at, and I'm able to do the things that I do, and I have a beautiful wife to do it with. So that's why I'm, I'm doing this video. It's, you know, I, I've always wanted to live my life uh, to the fullest possible. It's a combination of live for today, but plan for tomorrow. I know some of my friends out here who watch this video actually have some, uh, some medical problems. Uh, you know, those are a little bit harder to overcome than financial problems, and sometimes it's relationship problems, and that's even more stressful because you don't have control over uh, other people. Uh, but uh, I'm a firm believer that Although you cannot change reality, you can change the way you think about the reality. And uh, I've always tried to keep an upbeat attitude. So I try to live my life with a lot of basic core philosophies. Uh, one of which is that uh, when I die, that other version of me will walk up to me, grin, and say, Not bad, John. Not bad at all. Well, that's going to be about it for today's video. I really do appreciate you guys watching. I really hope that uh, this wasn't uh, too much of a, a downer of a video, but uh, if it uh, serves to inspire some folks out there, then uh, I'm, I'm tickled to, to tell my story. Um, so, uh, until next time, you all take care. Bye-bye.